This little kid finds a secret door in their house that leads into an even wilder surprise. In the quaint town of Willow Creek, the untimely death of their mother leaves young Nathan and Eric grappling with a silent house and an uncertain future. The boys, not yet in their teens, confront a reality where their father's absence is as palpable as the empty rooms echoing around them. He had abandoned the family for a life abroad with his new partner, leaving his sons to fend for themselves. Amidst the overgrown garden and fading memories of happier times, the brothers stumble upon a curious anomaly, a secret door concealed by a tangle of ivy on an unassuming wall at the back of their once joyful home. This door, unseen and unopened for years, stands as a silent guardian to secrets of a past generation. Their home, a legacy of their grandparents, now serves as a vessel of hope and fear. The threat of state custody looms over them, a menacing cloud that could sweep them away to the cold corridors of an orphanage at any moment. The small pension left behind from their mother's insurance is scant consolation in the face of such dread. As they confront the specter of being torn from the only home they've ever known, they find an unexpected alley in Mrs. Gardner, their school teacher. She extends a hand of compassion beyond the classroom, rallying the community to support the boys. Her efforts culminate in a collection to ensure their mother receives a dignified burial, a final act of respect for the woman who had fought so fiercely for her children's future. Mrs. Gardner's kindness is a beacon in the brothers' darkening world, yet her promise of stability is fragile. Her upcoming transfer to a distant town threatens to sever the boy's last tie to security and normalcy. Nathan and Eric are starkly aware that her departure could herald the arrival of state officials on their doorstep. Determined to remain together and avoid the fate of institutionalization, Nathan and Eric engage in a silent pact of survival. They don makeshift disguises and take to the streets, selling candy at traffic lights to the oblivious passers-by who know nothing of the brothers' plight. This act of resourcefulness becomes their daily ritual, a means to cling to the remnants of their former life. But their clandestine existence is precarious. As suspicions arise and the whispers of neighbors reach the ears of social services, the brothers' fear grows. They know it's only a matter of time before the authorities piece together the truth of their solitary existence. In a moment of desperation, and inspired by the mystery of the secret door, the boys venture into the unknown of their grandparents' land. Pushing past the fear that clutches at their hearts, they cross the threshold of discovery, hoping to find something, anything, that might offer them salvation from the life that seems to be insisted upon them. It's on this precipice of adolescence and orphanhood that Nathan and Eric find themselves poised between a past they can't return to and a future they can't yet see. In Willow Creek, the fabric of Nathan and Eric's life continues to fray as the impending departure of Mrs. Gardner, their stalwart protector and teacher, draws near. Her upcoming transfer to a town miles away send ripples of uncertainty through the fragile calm they had managed to construct amidst their chaos. Her commitment had been a steadfast light guiding them through their darkest times, but now the boys face the stark reality of losing their final advocate. The days roll on with the rhythmic monotony of survival. The brothers adopt the guise of street vendors, their young faces hidden behind the masks of entrepreneurship, as they peddle sweets at bustling intersections. It's a simple trade, but it yields enough to keep them looming specter of the orphanage at bay, one candy bar at a time. Their enterprise, born of necessity, becomes a testament to their ingenuity and determination to maintain the semblance of a family unit. Yet, as the coins clink into their modest savings jar, the brothers are all too aware of the precariousness of their situation. They weave through the cars and the crowds, invisible in their struggles, a pair of ghosts in a town that had known them since birth. Each transaction is a small victory, a defiance of fate that a society has penciled in for them. However, the brothers' cloak of invisibility begins to slip. Whispers turn to concerns, concerns to questions, and questions beckon the attention of social services. The community's awareness of their solitary living situation grows, and with it the risk of separation becomes a tangible threat. 
The brothers, wise beyond their years, can sense the tightening noose of bureaucracy, ready to snatch away the remnants of their independence. As their reality becomes increasingly suffocating, they cling to each other with a tenacity that is both heartrending and heroic. With every candy sold, they're buying time, each moment's a precious grain of sand in an hourglass of their autonomy. The countdown to Mrs. Gardner's departure is deafening in its silence, and in the void of the future, the brothers must make a choice. The prospect of an orphanage with its cold beds and unfamiliar faces is a nightmare they are unwilling to live. In the face of this, they resolve to fortify their resolve, to stand against the tide that seeks to sweep them into the system. And so Nathan and Eric navigate the challenges thrust upon them with a maturity that belies their tender years. They plot their course through the treacherous waters of their new reality, hoping to find a safe harbor before they're dragged under by the weight of their circumstance. Theirs is a battle against time and perception, fought with the only weapons they have, bravery and a bond that refuses to break. The hidden structure behind the overgrowth on their grandparents' property stood like a sentinel guarding the past. As Nathan and Eric push past the underbrush, a sense of foreboding mixed with an electric thrill of discovery. The building, a mini castle of stone and moss, was a stark contrast to the modest home they'd known. Here, in the shadowy silence, the brothers found remnants of their mother's childhood, a workshop that whispered of bygone days and the palpable presence of generations past. The structure was a time capsule, housing dusty toys, old furniture, and walls lined with tools that hadn't felt the warmth of human hands in years. But it was the library that held the boys' awe, a vast room with shelves sagging under the weight of leather-bound secrets and the scent of aged paper. Among the faded pages and forgotten lore, there lay a chance that this trove could offer them a lifeline. The mini castle was more than just a relic. It was a labyrinth of memories and hidden corners, each room unraveling a little more of their family's tapestry. It was in this stillness, this sanctuary untouched by the outside world, that the boys dared to dream of a future where they were not wards of the state but masters of their destiny. As they delved deeper into the castle, the boys' practical needs overshadowed their wonder. They needed to find something valuable, something that could keep the wolves of reality from their door. Their search became more frantic as the threat of discovery grew. Social services could arrive at any moment to shatter their fragile peace. In a secluded corner of the library, under the vigilant gaze of forgotten authors, they uncovered an old chest, a repository of the past that promised hope. The weight of its lid echoed through the silence as they peered inside to find a collection of gold jewelry and trinkets. The find was breathtaking, a tangible slice of fortune that could redefine their lives. This windfall was not just monetary, it was a symbol of their perseverance, a sign that fate might have a sliver of kindness left for them. Yet as they celebrated their luck, they found a photograph that connected them to the treasure, a picture of their mother as a young woman radiant and full of dreams. On the back, a handwritten note from her revealed the depth of a choice that had shaped their lives, a decision to follow love over legacy. This revelation brought a new understanding of their mother, her sacrifices, and the weight of her loss. The castle and its contents were no longer just a means to an end. They were a link to the mother they mourned and the grandparents they'd never known. It fortified their resolve to protect this inheritance, not just for financial security, but to honor the family that had unknowingly guided them to this moment of salvation. In the wake of their astonishing discovery, Nathan and Eric grappled with the enormity of their find. The gold and jewelry, remnants of a legacy they were only just beginning to comprehend, became the lifeline they had been desperately seeking. Yet with this treasure came a heavy burden— the need for secrecy, and the fear of the consequences should they be discovered. The brothers knew they had to act swiftly. The social services, with their mandate to protect but also to pry, were closing in, and the boys needed a plan to convert their newfound wealth into usable currency without drawing attention. It was a game of shadows and wits, and the stakes couldn't be higher. Under the cloak of dusk, they began to strategize— 
The mini castle, their secret stronghold, provided temporary solace, but it wasn't a sustainable hiding spot. They had to move their treasure and themselves out of the reach of prying eyes. Nathan, the elder, assumed the role of the strategist, planning their next move with the meticulous care of a seasoned general. Armed with nothing but their resourcefulness and the urgency of their plight, they transformed an old wheelbarrow into a makeshift transport for their gold. Disguised as mere trash collectors, they maneuvered their precious cargo through the back alleys and side streets of Willow Creek, the weight of the gold a physical manifestation of the burden they carried in their hearts. Their journey led them to a quaint gold-buying establishment. Nathan, masking his anxiety with the bravado only a 13-year-old could muster, negotiated the sale of a chain. Securing them much-needed funds, it was the first step into a world of commerce and adult decisions, a role they were forced into by circumstance, but one they embraced with a quiet determination. With cash in hand, the boys confronted their next challenge, finding a safe haven. They needed a place to lay low, to plan their future without the looming threat of discovery. The teacher who had been their guardian angel, Mrs. Gardner, became their accomplice, sheltering them from the storm that threatened to engulf them. As they navigated this new reality, the boys transformed from victims of their circumstances to architects of their destiny. Their entrepreneurial spirit, ignited by the need to survive, blossomed as they looked into the future. They began to dream of businesses they could start, lives they could lead away from the shadow of the state. The wealth from the mini castle was more than just financial. It was the foundation of hope, a testament to their resilience. With each step they took, Nathan and Eric rewrote their story from one of despair to one of possibility. Their bond as brothers, the unyielding anchor through every trial. Under the protective wing of Mrs. Gardner, Nathan and Eric began the delicate process of weaving their newfound wealth into the fabric of their lives without drawing undue attention. The brothers, with the intelligence of seasoned entrepreneurs, invested their gold wisely, seeding the beginnings of a business venture that promised to secure their future and honor the legacy of their family. With each passing day, their enterprise grew from a fledgling operation into a thriving business. The boys, once at the mercy of social services, now sat at the helm of their destiny, steering their lives away from the shoals of destitution and towards the horizon of prosperity. They reached adulthood not as wards of the state, but as young men of means. Their success, a silent tribute to the grandfather who had toiled in the mines and the mother who had raised them with love and determination. The transformation of their lives was as dramatic as it was inspiring. They had sidestepped the fate that seemed all but certain and in doing so had redefined what was possible. With Mrs. Gardner by their side, they ventured into the world of real estate and commerce. Their acumen and the hidden wealth of the mini castle propelled them forward. Yet the greatest test of their resolve came not from the challenges of business, but from the ghosts of their past. One morning, as the brothers stood on the cusp of yet another business triumph, an unexpected visitor appeared at the gates of their sprawling estate. Their father, the man who had abandoned them stood before them, a living reminder of their painful history. The reunion was fraught with emotion. Here was the man responsible for their mother's heartache, for the hardships they had endured. His eyes, filled with a remorse that came decades too late, met theirs searching for forgiveness and a place within the prosperous life his sons had built. Nathan and Eric, united as ever, faced this moment with the grace their mother had instilled in them. Despite the anger and the memories of abandonment, they chose a path of compassion, offering their father not retribution but refuge in a care facility where he could live out his days with dignity. As they turned away from the gate, the brothers knew they had closed a chapter on their past. Their lives, once overshadowed by their father's absence, were now their own, defined not by what they had lost but by what they had created. Together, they built an empire found peace, and forged a legacy that would speak through their strength, their love, and the indomitable spirit of family for generations to come.